Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Michelle Sergio, Kirk Stephenson, Miranda Janelle, and new patron Tanner. Yay! Tanner. Tanner. On this episode of DTNS, the TikTok craze that's sweeping the world, banning TikTok. Plus, Instagram commits to smaller creators right as they might leave TikTok, huh? And why trucking might beat taxis to become the world's first truly driverless industry. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, April 30th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House. And sometimes I feel like I have, I don't know, amnesia. I'm Sarah Lane. <laughs> Producing the, the show from north of the wall, I'm Amos. This is the Daily Tech News show for, oh yeah, no, it's, it, it, there's some kind of deja vu going on. I'm getting it too now, Sarah. Mm. Let's start with the quick hits. <laughs> I'm quite certain I have not read this before. The Financial Times profiled Apple's Vision Lab for developing AI in Zurich, Switzerland. Apple has acquired around two dozen startups in the past 10 years in areas like AI reasoning, image and video recognition, data processing, search, and music content curation. Former Apple AI employee and Carnegie Mellon scientist Ruslan Sokol... Denov says that ch uh, chip power and concerns over inaccuracies have slowed Apple's introduction of AI features. We're all expecting to find out more about how far along Apple actually is solving this at WWDC on June 10th. News publishers are either paying AI companies or suing them for not paying them. Uh, let's go with the suing first. Eight U.S. newspapers owned by Alden Global Capital are suing OpenAI and Microsoft for copyright infringement. The complaint is for using their content to train models. That's pretty typical. New York Times is suing over the same thing. Uh, removing identifying info like journalist names, titles, uh, using their trademarks without uh, ap approval. And they also claim incorrect answers attribute to damage to the publisher's reputations. That's the first time I've seen that one. Meanwhile, the information sources say that Google has reached a five to six million dollar deal with News Corp to develop new AI related products. But News Corp says they haven't signed a content licensing deal. This is for other stuff. Beats announced new over-ear headphones, the Solo 4 line. They don't have noise cancellation, but they do support wired audio over USB-C and mini jack. They can play when plugged in, even if the battery is dead, and support both iOS and Android. They come out in June for $200. Beats also announced the Solo Buds. That's the company's first sub $100 pair of wireless ear buds. They have noise isolation, not active noise cancellation, but you know, depending on what you're looking for, that might be enough for you. The case doesn't have a battery to recharge. The buds have to be in the case and the case plugged in to charge. So yeah, a little bit different than what you might be used to, but you only have to pay $80 available now. Ooh. The Arc browser is the one with a collapsible sidebar and vertical tabs. It's only been available for Mac OS and iOS until now. If you want to try the browser company's new take on the browser, Arc is now available for Windows. Arc for Windows is also the result of the browser company's work to bring Apple's Swift programming language to Windows as well. This might be the more significant part of this. Browser company has open sourced a lot of the infrastructure it used to build Windows apps in Swift. So this isn't a port. They built a Windows app from scratch using Swift. French satellite company SES is purchasing Intelsat for $3.1 billion. That's in an effort to offer more options than those already provided by Starlink and Amazon's Project Kuiper. The company said in a statement that the partnership would have a fleet of more than 100 geostationary Earth orbit and 26 medium Earth orbit satellites. You might say, well, that sounds like a lot. Huh. By comparison, Starlink has around 5,800 satellites in orbit currently. Intel Stat, uh, Intel Stat, Intel Sat rather, was looking at bankruptcy as early as 2022. Some say this was a bit of a fire sale, but in any case, SES's CEO Adele Al Saleh stated that the acquisition was easier to clear from the regulatory point of view than a merger, and Intel Sat's emergence from bankruptcy was also a factor. All right, more satellites going up then. 
The U.S. may not be the last to ban TikTok. Uh, we've got we got a few TikTok updates for you. So here's the first. At an election debate in Germany, uh, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, who was taking part of the debate as part of her party versus in her role as commission president, but still talking from her experience, said, we know exactly the danger of TikTok, pointed out that the European Commission was the first governmental entity in the world to ban TikTok from government phones. And she implied that TikTok could possibly face a similar situation in Europe to that which it is facing in the U.S. So she did. She was very careful in her choice of words. She didn't say we're going to ban TikTok here too, but she did say don't get too comfortable. We're, you know, the U.S. isn't an exception. Now, we have been talking about TikTok uh, specifically quite a bit on the show as of late because it's been in the news, but... TikTok may not be the last. The law that named TikTok also gave the president the power to identify other apps owned by a company controlled by a foreign adversary and ban those apps as well. Congressional aides tell the Washington Post that ByteDance's CapCut editing software is one of those could be next on the chopping block. Yeah, but but I've been wondering if they would come for other ByteDance apps. CapCut, incredibly popular, even with people who don't use TikTok as a mobile video editor. Uh, I almost feel like that would get even more backlash uh, than, than banning TikTok, but we'll see. And in another piece of evidence as to why ByteDance would probably rather not get pulled uh, from the United States if it had its choice, it has more than doubled the number of sellers in the U.S. on TikTok shop to 500,000. Now, that may sound like a lot, there are 15 million TikTok shop sellers worldwide. So it's both growing in the U.S., which is good news for TikTok, but also not the majority of its TikTok shop revenue. If it does get banned, it wouldn't hit, hurt it right away. Yeah, I mean, 15 million sellers overall with not even 1 million of those, it, it, half of that uh, being U.S.-based means, okay, well, perhaps on the up and up, but that's not... That's not a, a, a huge part of its, uh, yeah, what its I, users are doing. Yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, it's interesting to see the spread now, right? Uh, we the, the clock's ticking on, on ByteDance to file their court case. I am a little bit surprised we haven't seen it yet. They had plenty of time to prepare for it, but there there may be some subtleties to the timing of when they file their court case uh, that, that elude me. But they are going to file a constitutional challenge. It is likely to be on First Amendment grounds. Uh, they may make some other claims, but their consensus is their best shot is to say uh, this is a violation of First Amendment rights. Uh, foreign companies have been shown by precedent to have First Amendment rights in the U.S., so it doesn't matter that ByteDance is a Cayman Islands company or Singapore company or Chinese company. Uh, they would still be protected in their operations in the United States by the restriction on the United States from abridging freedom of speech into the press. Uh, so that's what they're going to go after. And I think they're going to be challenged on national security grounds. And I think they're going to try for an injunction. Uh, and the injunction would say, pause the clock on the nine months uh, that we have to sell TikTok or get banned, which is what the law says. Uh, but we're still waiting on that. Uh, are you surprised, Sarah, that we haven't heard them file a case yet? No, uh, because I think that there's a lot of hedging of bets uh, going on in this whole process um, from all parties, um, whether it is the U.S. government or ByteDance in general, trying to figure out how they can drag this out as long as possible, which could be years. Um, and also, you know, what TikTok could do, you know, the, the whole sort of like, well, maybe if TikTok just like strips its for you algorithm, then the, you know, the company is getting less data from its users and then that will appease lawmakers in the U.S. I don't think that's true, but that's something that you know, has been floated uh, by multiple people who have been by following the By people who story. aren't ByteDance. By, there's no chance in hell that ByteDance is going to give up that uh, algorithm or that somebody would want to buy TikTok without the algorithm. Also, well, China, has, China, China has said they will block a sale. So, yeah, when, when I because I've seen those two. I've, see, I've seen those two, and I, I, I'm with you. I'm like, ah, that, that doesn't seem likely. I don't know what bets they would have to hedge at this point. Uh, and 
it does feel like they're drumming up pressure on them by having Ursula von der Leyen out there saying, I don't know, Europe, you know, <laughs> nice TikTok you got here. Hate, hate for anything to happen to it. Uh, congressional aides saying cap cuts next. That's definitely trying to crank up the pressure on ByteDance. So it's interesting to me that you're thinking like, maybe there's a deal being struck because there's not wiggle room. If, if ByteDance doesn't get something, they either have to sell or they have to challenge it in court. But you're right. Maybe the fact that they haven't challenged it in court means there, there's something up. Maybe there, maybe there's some talks. I don't know. I've watched enough Law & Order to know that uh, you can... You can you can uh you can bury companies in a lot of different ways um and mm -hmm. figure that out um not to say that that is what ByteDance dance should do with tiktok nor what it is doing with tiktok but yes um these sorts of things tend to be i mean when you have a a a real a real hit on your hands and this is not just user base but you know millions of dollars being made for the company uh, yeah. on a regular basis. Um, I think you probably try to like reinvent it from scratch any way possible. I, I bet a lot of people don't even realize that CapCut is owned by ByteDance, that it's the same I didn't company. know that. Yeah, I didn't as, know as that TikTok. when Eileen Rivera, who you may know, you may know Tom, um, she oh, and I, I were talking on Apple Vision show recently, and she's like, I love CapCut. It is so great to, you know, for like editing mobile video on the fly, Great results, um, works with my smartphone. I mean, she was talking it up. I did not know that was a ByteDance company. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, there definitely, there's definitely something afoot uh, when you're talking about, about CapCut. It's definitely putting pressure. Maybe there is a deal. Maybe, you know, maybe there, there's, there's something cooking, some kind of compromise uh, because the, the president can kind of have some latitude to decide whether the terms have been met or not. I suppose somebody could sue the president over their decision and challenge it if they didn't like it. But uh, my guess is that, you know, there, there's some bipartisan unity about what would be acceptable. We'll, we'll see if that's the case. Well, uh, speaking of social networks that have some traction, Instagram is making some changes to its algorithm to recommend more smaller creators going forward. It's also going to replace reposts with original content and recommendations, add labels to reposted content to make it clear that this originated somewhere else, and remove content aggregators from recommendations. Now, you might say, what's a content aggregator? You might have seen the same you know, cute picture of a cat um, in four different places. That's aggregation in some form. Um, there are others. Creators have repeatedly said the algorithm works against them. In response, Instagram has a new way to rank recommendations that will show eligible content to a smaller audience. If and when people engage with that content, the top performing set of reels will be shown to more people. Then the most popular of those reels will be shown to an even wider group, et cetera, et cetera. Supposed to kind of go back to organic, uh, you know, word of mouth. Instagram says this change will give all creators an equal <laughs> or at least better chance of finding their audiences. Yeah, I really like the changes that say those aggregators, right? Somebody who's just reposting other people's stuff. We're going to we're going to we're going to if we detect that happening, we're not going to give them juice in the algorithm. That's, I think, a good idea. Uh, I like the fact that even if a repost takes off, the algorithm is going to show the original if we can determine what the original is. So even if the repost gets popular, the original starts getting uh, the love, which I've seen lots of creators complain like I made this thing. Somebody else copied it, posted it, and they're getting all the love from the algorithm. Those yeah. are wonderful. Um, promoting more. More smaller doesn't mean they're tiny. It means more of the smaller creators. Uh, I I think is is laudable. I'm I'm curious about this tournament style thing that you talk about, where it's like, uh, we, you know, we'll we'll promote a bunch of stuff, and then the more popular that gets gets promoted more. Doesn't that just end up creating popular creators that the algorithm isn't supposed to be favoring? Like, it, it, I I don't know how that's going to work in practice. I guess we'll I don't see. either. And I I've been thinking about this because. I would think that the problem that, you know, if you compare Instagram and TikTok and Snap and, I mean, to some extent, X and Threads, I mean, places where you can get uh, viral content that is, you know, a funny paragraph, a funny photo, a funny mm -hmm. video, you know, some combination of all of those things, you 
you sometimes, if, if you hang out online long enough, you start to see the same memes all over the place, oh, yeah. which can be funny, but also repetitive. And for Instagram to sort of be like, you know what, we're going to be the place where you see different stuff. You know, everyone else is replicating everything and we're going to be the place that you see new and unique uh, content. Mm -hmm. That's that's a That's a long bet. But I think it's a good one. Oh, it's it's definitely tied to the fact that people are experimenting with alternatives to TikTok in the United States right now. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't think there should be any doubt upon that. Uh, if you're new to Instagram, but you're huge on TikTok, your first question is, how do I increase my audience on Instagram? And Instagram is telling you here, here's how you're a smaller creator on Instagram, even if you're big on TikTok. But don't worry, uh, we're going to give everybody an equal chance at this. Uh, your mileage may vary how that algorithm favors you in progress in, in reality. Right. But uh, it's it's the kind of message that I would want to be putting out there to to people nosing around from TikTok if I'm Instagram reels for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, as far as content that's being aggregated and reposted, you know, often without um, proper attribution to the original author, um, I see that a lot. Uh, my dog has an Instagram account, Otis Redding Lane. Uh, he's very friendly if you'd like to follow him. But um, that in particular, because it's like we follow all dog content and it's like mm. cute puppies, cute kitties, look at the blue sky. You know, it's like, it's it's very sort yeah, of like yeah. vanilla stuff and which is great. Uh, that's what I go there for. But I see a lot of the same posts where I'm like, wait, didn't I see this? Oh, this is a totally different account. That's like, you know, I don't know, some like bully breed aggregator, yeah, what, yeah. whatnot kind of thing. Now, I'm not like super bent out of shape about this, but I would be if it was my photo. I would be really bent out of shape if it was something that I created that showed up somewhere else. And even if even if there was a link back to me, you know, without a conversation about that, um, that's a problem. Um, and I don't think that Instagram is going to win um, the social network wars by just saying like, eh, we don't deal with the, you know, the big like three million followers on TikTok. We want like the little 300 follower uh, um, creator, you know, that we're going to push to the top of our algorithm. I think it's just more of a let's kind of clean the pipes, so to speak. Yeah. Let's, you yeah. know, let's get let let let's let's give people new stuff that they might uh feel fatigue in in other places. No, that's a really good point. It, they are not going to try to take these extra views away from their biggest creators <laughs> that are some of the people driving uh the most traffic to Instagram. They're going to take them away from content aggreg aggregators. I mean, you, you can do the math here. It's like, "Oh, all these people reposting, uh we're going to take that traffic, give it to divvy it up amongst some smaller creators um but they they I, yeah i don't think they're gonna antagonize their their most successful people because they need to keep those people on the platform as well indeed well uh apple apple has a lot of power users uh regular users casual users and then there are the rest of us that are somewhere in between uh every week eileen rivera and yours truly host apple vision show to talk about whether apple's vision matches what we the people actually want. Please subscribe and join us. We'd love to have you. AppleVisionShow.com. Pittsburgh's Aurora Innovation plans to start operating 20 driverless freight trucks on Interstate 45 between Dallas and Houston later this year. Uh, that corridor has been tested by freight uh, driverless freight trucks uh, by lots of different companies. It seems to be a popular place to go. Clients include FedEx, Uber Freight, Werner, and more. Though They're all going to use Aurora's trucks to have some stuff delivered. They think they can have thousands of these trucks on U.S. roads within the next few years. The trucks save on fuel because the speeds are more consistent than a human driver, and they can operate longer because they don't need to rest. So you can run them 24-7. Uh, that means you can speed up deliveries and bring down the price of the deliveries. Um, there's a lot of companies doing this. A lot of companies want to become the first one to do it. Aurora is just one that the Associated Press profiled here because they're about to start a new test. 
16 wheeler, eight does 16 wheeler, 18 wheeler barreling down the highway right at you, Sarah. You're in a little sedan. You look up and there's nobody in it. There's nobody driving. How you feeling about that? First of all, Tom, I'm in an SUV midsize. Uh, Good. No, okay. But, uh, you're safer yeah, now. <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't care if it's a sedan Slightly. or a Corvette yeah, or a yeah. 16, 18 wheeler. No, I, I, I get your point. I have not uh, ever been on Interstate 45, but I'm going to assume it is, uh, you know, a real thoroughfare because, um, you know, <laughs> looking at Texas on a map, the two, yeah. you know, have some distance between them. It's per I've re I've actually driven it. It's pretty boring. So maybe that's why <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe so. And maybe that is why this is a great test um, for larger trucks um, for the most comparable uh, route that I can think of would be um, Highway 5, uh, Interstate 5, yeah, of course, Interstate, um, which is in California between Northern and Southern California, which I've driven many times over mm. the years. Um, lots of big, 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 big trucks, lots of truck stops, uh, you know, where people are, you know, they either pull over because they blew a tire or have to rest or I don't know, someone needs food. All of those things, if they were equal, but take out the human element, makes this all make a lot of sense. Now, uh, as to whether I feel safer, I don't really know yet. I've actually just recently seen a couple of Waymo cars, and I know that's very different. These are small sedans um, on uh, city streets here in Los Angeles. Um, the first time I saw one, I was like, oh my God, look, oh my gosh, make it a left turn, no driver, ah! And the second time I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, look at that, uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah, somebody's double parked, look at you, yeah, looks good. I mean, I have no cause to feel like this is a bad idea. I think that human drivers would say, well, well you know, you can't, you know, no robot can drive as well as me. And I think that's probably true. Um, but as far as long hauls, um, uh, you know, saving on gas, not having to stop, no bathroom breaks, um, that, I mean, that just makes perfect sense. Oh, I, I think uh, humans may say that no one can drive as good as that, but it has been demonstrable that machines drive much better than humans. Uh, we, we all tend to overestimate our, our own uh, ability to drive, but uh, the safety testing on these, all the accidents uh, for Aurora trucks were the fault of a human driver. Uh, in some cases, it was a human driver unexpectedly changing lanes in front of the autonomous truck. Mm -hmm. And then there were three accidents, uh, some changing lanes and two rear ending the truck. You can't blame the truck for that when somebody just hit right into the back and, of it. You know, so. And we have lots of conversations these days about, you know, distracted driving and were you looking at a phone? And, you know, that's a huge factor these days. But I mean, just to be in a bad mood can be a really yeah. bad recipe oh, for, for sure. driving, yeah. you know, or, or just, you know, your mind somewhere else, or, you know, you simply didn't see the car, you know, in front of you. There are all sorts of reasons that humans, um, uh, you know, get behind the wheel with absolute uh, best intentions uh, that it, it doesn't always work out that way. So to, to get back to the wider question, uh, you're going to see Aurora doing this. You're going to see Plus.ai. You're going to see Gaddock. You're going to see Kodiak Robotics, all trying to put autonomous freight trucks on the road in the next couple of years. Uh, they are tapped to pass the passenger vehicles in the rollout. Passenger vehicles have been making steady progress. That's why Sarah's seeing Waymo vehicles in Los Angeles when we haven't seen them here for a long time. They're expanding the market, but it's slow. It's slow expansion because they want to get it right. These companies don't want to have bad press from accidents. There's tons of that that has come out of San Francisco. Thankfully, nothing out of San Francisco has been uh, as bad as what happened to Uber in Arizona when, when someone was struck and killed by an autonomous vehicle with a human safety driver on board. Yeah. Uh, and that drove Uber out of the business. Where I'm going with this is if we have an increase in freight trucks on the highways, there is going to be an accident with a fatality at some point. It's just it's just percentage chance. I don't want there to be, but you just know there's going to be. And at that point, autonomous freight trucks are going to have the same issues that passenger trucks have had on the safety perception. It's much easier, like Sarah said, 
to to have a controlled access highway programmed uh, into these trucks because there's fewer variables, there's fewer cars, there's not as many weird things like pedestrians and bicycles and weird turns and stuff on controlled access freeways. But that's not going to matter. What's going to matter is how the public reacts to a fatal accident with a truck that didn't have anybody on board. And how much mm -hmm. is that going to set things back? Yeah. And um, just uh, one more point. I, I can think of a variety of highways that at least on some part of the um, point A to point B, uh, trucks, buses, uh, you know, trailers kind of have their own area. If there were situations, and this would not apply to, you know, all highways, even if they go cross country or, you know, whatever, um, because of terrain. But if there could be a, like, this is where, like, the Amazon trucks are. Nobody else goes in that lane. Yeah, you're, dedicated you're, lane. That that's that's something that you know that that's going to greatly reduce the conversation about safety to humans. Uh, that would be one of the reactions I might expect. Is like, okay, you can use these, but you gotta you gotta wall them off, uh, which I, would be an overreaction. Uh, and it, it, I'm not sure it would be a waste of money, but it would be an expense that may or may not be required. Because yeah. as BioCow said, uh, human trucking companies have fatal accidents all the time the issue with that is we have someone to blame right we have a human when there's nobody on board you're blaming the algorithm and when you're blaming the algorithm you're now blaming people are all like, the humans all, who work at the company well you're not not only that but you're blaming all the trucks because it's all the same algorithm right yeah, they're all right. dangerous they all mm. could do this whereas with a human you can say well that well, that person shouldn't have had a license yeah they didn't Don't get any sleep anymore. last night yeah yeah or, exactly you know. or whatever so it's it's uh i i hate to be the negative person on this but the I have been thinking that freight trucks would be the more likely winner of the race to a, a real driverless industry just because it's easier to do the stuff on the road and people are sort of used to being careful around big old semi trucks and everything too. Um, but it's going to have to pass that hump uh, and, and uh, it's not going to be enjoyable when it does. So I still think two or three years is, is pretty ambitious. I, I, I think it's even going to be longer than that. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, let's check out the mailbag. Well, Tom, you had a fun show from Las Vegas yesterday. and we did, uh, yeah. Yeah, and in response to that, Anand Jr. wrote in regarding uh, the talk about technology that you need to prepare for an event where you're not at your home setup. Uh, Anand wrote... Had to laugh at the trust but prepare anyway attitude towards venues. I used to roadie for a local Christian rock band, and I remember stuff like the venue promising there was a great monitor setup, only to arrive and find all they had was a single small monitor wedged between the vocalist mics. Wasn't the first or last time what was promised and what was there ended up being different. Yeah, but there are a few reactions like that uh, from our conversation yesterday. I'm, I'm glad so many of you enjoyed hearing a little bit of that behind the scenes uh, a little bit of that brass tacks sort of setup stuff. And, and thanks again to Ibid and Scott uh, for being willing to talk about that as well. And, and thanks again to all the people. We had a packed house uh, who came and watched the show. Uh, so many of you uh, said nice things afterward. Mark and Amanda came up and, and <laughs> were telling me how much they liked it. Uh, you know, uh, T Tina was was telling me how much they she liked it. Even Christine was telling me. Like, people who had never seen the show before were, were very into it. So that was really fun. I'm glad we did we should do more of that i think Just let's saying. get on the road mm -hmm. in our well it wouldn't be a driverless well I guess it could be a driverless truck carrying our stuff. We would just be in the back of we, the semi. We're just freight. Yeah, yeah. at that point. Yeah. That's fine. I'm fine. It sounds uh, big. <laughs> also, something happened to me during my travels this weekend uh, that involved Netflix. I got caught by the Netflix password crackdown and couldn't watch Netflix when I wanted to watch it. We're going to discuss how I got around that and why I'm not even mad. I'm just fascinated by the whole thing. Oh, this is a good reason to check out GDI today. But just a reminder, you can catch our show, DTNS is live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That is 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're back tomorrow with Eileen Rivera, my Apple Vision Show co-host, joining us. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>